So this might have been the best Pokemon Direct that we have ever had. Expectations were pretty low as the Pokemon company announced that they were going to hit us with a 20 minute Direct, but they really dropped a bombshell on us with the announcement of the expansion pack for Pokemon Sword and Shield. So in this video, I'm going to be going through some things that you may have missed, uh, kind of just taking our time going through the Direct and talking about my thoughts. And uh, I'm really excited about the information that we got. It's way more than I was expecting. And I'm interested to hear what you guys kind of think about it as well. If you think that they uh, did this well, if you think that uh, there's some things they should have done differently. But um, it is important to note that in the beginning section of the Direct, they actually do announce um, an entirely new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game, which is something I'm going to skip over in this video because we're kind of just going to be going in depth on the Pokemon Sword and Shield stuff. But I would recommend checking out the full Direct if that is something that you're into. So... Let's go ahead and just get right into uh, the trailer, which they do show first, and then they actually hit us with some uh, more information after. So, let's jump right into it, boys. There is so much to talk about here, as I've done a pretty decent job of analyzing this, but let's get it started. So, in the beginning, they just kind of show us things that we have already seen before. Uh, no new information here, we just see all the previous gym leaders, and just kind of giving us uh, a quick trailer of the game in general. But, where it gets interesting is where they start showing us some entirely new things. So... As we'll see here, they are going to start us off with some new character designs. We do also in the corner here see a Kanto Zapdos. Um, so it looks like the characters are like dressed after the Zapdos. We also see the Moltres there. Um, is this actually the only place I believe we even see the Kanto forms of the legendary birds? We also see the Articuno. Um, but we do actually see new forms of these things later. So I thought it was interesting that they showed those there. So maybe they're all going to be included. Um, but in the next scene, we do see introduction to Registeel along with a new Pokemon in the corner, which to me looks like it's a just a different form of Registeel, which is interesting. So um, we also see the Regice over here, which we are introduced to all these things later on. But I think it's important to kind of stop uh, and take a look at what's going on here. We see kind of like a temple area, which is probably where we're going to be getting uh, Registeel, seeing as it's, you know, taped right there. But yeah, so in this next scene, we do get introduced to our old friend Talonflame. Um, so the biggest thing about all this information is that they are bringing us back some beloved Pokemon. So uh, Talonflame, the first thing you think about when this is kind of being introduced is that there's going to be a lot of Pokemon that come with it. Also, thinking about the implications to the competitive metagame, when Talonflame comes back, it has the ability Gale Wings. Are they going to bring it back nerfed like they did before? Are they going to change it up altogether? Uh, nobody knows, but it is good to know that Talonflame is going to be coming back for us, so that is awesome. Along with some new designs to the bike, which is nothing too crazy, but they are uh, bringing us some new mods, which is awesome. So, this is the expansion pass. Um, one important thing to note, which I do think they touch on later, is that you actually, when you pay the $30 for one of the expansion packs, you actually get both. Uh, a lot of people are thinking that you have to pay the full $60 to get all of the content, but when you get one, uh, you actually do get all the content. So, just going to clear that up right from the start here. But So, right off the bat, they start us off with a tropical area, which is insane because obviously there was nothing like this previously, so there's going to introduce, introduce us to a whole new section of the game, which is going to come with a wild area, which is awesome. Also, if we pause on this screen here, this is kind of a lower res image of this. Um, as we'll see later, uh, if I can actually go back just a little bit, we can kind of pause as it's more zoomed in on that, but in the small section right here, this to me looks like a Psyduck, two Psyducks and a Golduck. Um, which is something we do not have in the game yet. So they're going to bring that back for us. Also, we see the Talon Flames. Uh, like I said, though, do we, we do actually get this image in a higher resolution later. So we'll kind of talk about that and at least pause it um, a little bit more later. But yeah, this is an entirely new area. Tropical as hell. We also see a large building over here, which is either um, going to be like a gym or it could potentially be some type of new battle tower mechanic. Who knows? Uh, also, in the background here, we do see our first signs of the starters getting their Gigantamax forms, which is awesome. Um, we see the Inteleon with the Sniper there. We also see a Venusaur, which is crazy. And then some new characters, which we actually do get introduced to. So we'll not touch on those too close yet, but good to know that we can see Blastoise and Venusaur, Venusaur in their Gigantamax forms. Um, and then also we do see the Cinderace in the corner. So we're going to be introduced to those later. Other than that, there's just new characters and kind of just drawings. So not a whole lot there, but... Here's where it gets crazy. My man Slowpoke 
Game Freak heard me, bro. They, <laughs> they knew they had to bring back the Paul. So this um, is going to be an entirely new form of Slowpoke. Not really sure why they decided to put the different colors on this thing, but it does evolve or have a new form, which uh, does show some different coloration there, which is really cool. So all new Slowpoke, which is insane. We do see the new icon there, which is going to be the... Um, dojo here which <clears throat> actually looks like this is going to be an all-new gym leader uh, he does have like a paw which i assume just means fighting it's got to be just the fighting type which i think they actually do talk about this later uh, like i said we're not going to pause too much on this early trailer as they do touch on these things a lot later but this is my boy mustard next up they do kind of show us some new outfits guessing this is going to be the karate one as it does have the he's got the got the belt on all that stuff got the female version as well so new uh, hairstyles along with all the new clothes is something that is awesome. We definitely needed that. We can also cosplay as Wally, which <laughs> you can get that green hair, which is super cool. Um, hold up. The new backpacks is actually something that I'm kind of stoked about. Uh, so they don't show this too much, but we no longer have to have a damn barrel on our back if you want a backpack. So now we have all new backpack designs along with purses for the female. And uh, if we pause on the hats here, there's actually some pretty clean designs. We have the berries. So under the brim of the hat, uh, there is going to be some new designs, which is super cool. Also, there was one here that I wanted to pause on, as I did before. And I was able to take a look at... Um, it's kind of like yellow sketches of the starter Pokemon. But it does resemble real uh, hat designs that I have actually seen. So <laughs> I don't know why the designs are so crude, but it's actually kind of fresh. Uh, I do like the design. They're, they're really sticking with kind of the yellow theme. Uh, we do see more of the bicycle and uh, those designs. Also, we do see our first introduction to this lady, which is going to be another gym leader. Uh, they do introduce us to this lady later on. Um, she is going to be the poison type gym leader. And the first thing I notice about this is her bow looks suspiciously like a dust ox. Uh, that's something that I think, obviously, she's the poison type leader. Maybe we're getting a new dust ox form, or maybe she just has that... Kind of just for aesthetic, but either way, it seems like we're getting Dustox back. Uh, it should come with Beautifly and some new Pokemon, which is cool. So that's just kind of one little thing that I decided to touch on there. She got a damn Dustox on her head, so that's pretty cool. Next up, we have, I believe this is the other version. Um, they both, you don't have both in the same game, but she is definitely going to have the Psychic type because we got the Bent Spoons there. And also got the Top Hat <laughs> with the Pokeballs. Next up, we do see a Volcarona here. And Volcarona is coming back, boys, um, which is something that is super crazy because Volcarona is going to be way more viable in a metagame where we have access to the item um, Heavy Duty Boots, which is great because this thing is not going to take damage from Stealth Rock, which was its biggest downfall. So there's going to be a lot of new threats in the metagame. Also, we see Kingdra, which is something that is super cool. In the background, nothing too crazy going on. Basically, just the same photos we've seen so far. Um, some new Pokemon. We got the Lycan Rock, and here they're gonna show us our new forms of the starters. So we do have the Venusaur. This man is high as hell, but I actually really do like this thing's design. Um, it kind of, it really puts Mega Venusaur to shame. Look at the size of that flower. My God, absolute unit. And then obviously we have to have Blastoise. So. I, did, I do believe we actually did have access to code um, where it showed us the uh, the fact that Blastoise and Venusaur will be in the game eventually. I thought they were going to kind of roll them out in the form of like a raid battle, uh, but it looks like they're just giving it to us straight up. I mean, it's going to be in the expansion pack, so that's super cool. Next up, we do have the information about our starter form so check it out we do have the rillaboom with the drum set we do get introduced to more of this later um we're just going to run through the trailer as it's only about three minutes and then they give us more information but yo inteleon with the sniper though it's <laughs> honestly super cool he's kind of up in like a sniper perch which is awesome um and then they kind of just run us through an entirely new looking wild area so we do see the raid den there uh but i do think this is super cool because the wild area was definitely kind of the saving grace about pokemon sword and shield it was definitely the best part and the fact that they're introducing more wild area is definitely needed. So this, in my opinion, could be the expansion that saves Pokemon Sword and Shield. So um, we do see more raid dens over there. But the Isle of Armor. So there's two different areas. Uh, the Isle of Armor is going to be kind of the island area, which is looking pretty awesome. And they do go uh, a little bit more in depth, I believe. So let's check it out. So we actually have uh, some snowy areas, which can't be in the island, but... Didn't seem like it would be. We got a uh, big old tree, nice little castle there, which uh, we also do actually get introduced to 
this Articuno looking boy here, which is definitely going to be a different form of Articuno. Um, we do get introduced to these as well, but uh, taking a look here, we actually do get a full kind of image of what Slowpoke evolves into. Uh, we do actually get a more HD version of this soon, but being able to kind of analyze what's going on in the background, I think is important. But other than that, we just see these, uh, these new outfits, but I do believe they actually show us that as well. So not sure what the icons really are working with here. Uh, they're kind of just showing us some sketches of kind of like temple looking areas. We also have the snow dude. He's screaming. And check it out. We can be straight up Eskimo out here. So it does seem like they're actually showing us a whole bunch of new, uh, a new, new clothing options, which I think is pretty cool. More personalization is fantastic. Also, we are introduced to Reg Ice, which does show its ice temple as well. Um, so that is super cool. You can see kind of like the whole braille theme going on next up is reggie rock we see his as well so he's kind of just posted up in his rock temple um, i'm assuming these are going to come in the form of raid battles i do believe they actually discussed this but super cool that we're able to get that back and what in the world was this you may ask that has got to be a new reggie form i mean it's definitely shown in the same section um so that is super cool it's got to be got to be electric type reggie which is nuts. Also, we do have this one that, one thing to note about this, it's got a, it, it straight up got a Charizard head. What is what is going on with the Charizard head? I have no idea. It reminds me of Mawile quite a bit, um, but that is something that's definitely curious. That's gotta be the Registeel form. Also, they do show us a little bit closer of what the Slowpoke is gonna, gonna work with. So I assume that this is the Slow King. Um, we can kind of see what seems to be an eye, a little bit of a mouth, but they, they really kind of block out most of what you can see on the face there. Uh, so a little bit unfortunate, but it is great news that Slowpoke can evolve into an entirely new form, which is super cool. So that's definitely gonna be Slow King. He's kind of got his cloak going on. Um, I do believe you get Slow King from Sword or Shield and then uh, Slow Bro from Pokemon Sword. Um, which I do think they touch on, but showing us just some more accessories, nothing really too crazy. And uh, we do have some new access to like glasses. Also got the sponsors on the outfit. Next up, they are going to show us some more new Pokemon. We have the Aurorus, which is awesome. Also, we have the Nidorino, which does basically allude to the fact that obviously we're going to get the Nidorina as well. So Nidoqueen and Nidoking coming back, which is fantastic. Definitely going to switch things up in the metagame for us. We also got the Celio, And that is a Garchomp, ladies and gentlemen. That is really going to change things up for us. The Garchomp, I think, is probably the biggest release because Garchomp being one of the better pseudo-legendaries in the game, probably going to get access to Dragon Dance in this, which is going to be absolutely overpowered as hell and is going to be very fun to mess around with. So, Garchomp is back, boys. Young Cynthia is stoked. Um, so, this is where they show us um, our first parts of the different forms of legendary birds. So we're gonna pause it here. So this is the new Moltres, which is looking crazy. No idea if these are gonna um, come with new typings altogether, but either way, they have super cool designs and I really do like that Moltres, which is articuno. My favorite is the Zapdos, but next up is the Articuno. This thing looks like it's gotta be psychic type. It, it really has to be some type of new typing. It's gonna shoot either an ice beam out of its eyes or something. Um, my opinion is that that's gonna be some type of psychic type. And then next up, we have the Zapdos. Yeah, this thing straight up turned into a Roadrunner. It did not skip leg day. Look at those talons. Absolutely insane. Super cool design. Uh, really no idea um, what's up with the tree. It seems like they're all linked together from some type of tree. They're, it seems like they really do kind of emphasize uh, the tree there. So I'm assuming that's going to be where we're going to do the raid battles for these things. But it's really curious that they decided to bring new forms to previous legendaries, which they really tr seem to stick with the trios, uh, which is which is very interesting. So the trios are coming back, baby. We also got some new kind of wild area footage. Nothing too insane there. We just kind of see the goggles, really just some signs. Um, but here is where it really does seem to emphasize the tree with the uh, the legendary birds. It looks like they are all around it. As you can see Moltres kind of up at the top. Um, but we see the, the other Reggie. Electric Reggie going to be crazy. The Crown Tundra. So uh, that is the snow eater section. We have the island and then the Crown Tundra. So part one and part two. Very interesting. Also, they are going to finish us off here. Uh, with one <laughs> quick introduction to some new legendaries. So check this out. We have all new legendary Pokemon. This is kind of similar to the introduction they gave us to Zamazenta and Zacian earlier on, um, where it's kind of a different art style. 
Uh, but it is really cool to know that they did include more legendaries, which is something I was definitely expecting. Uh, other than just the, you know, the obvious ones that we get in Sword and Shield to start. They do hit us with these, which do kind of share similar um, colorations to Zamazenta and Zacian, which is really cool. So these fighting Kung Fu boys are pretty awesome. So they kind of are just going to finish us off with one last legendary or mythical Pokemon, which in my opinion is a straight up turkey baster. And uh, one thing to notice, it has Triforces on its on its little uh, Zenyatta balls, which is very strange, but not the biggest fan of the design of this thing, but I'm all for new legendary Pokemon, so that is pretty exciting. And that is what they hit us with in just the trailer. Uh, so that's just the first look, and they do actually go into some more information about the expansion pack here. So coming by June 2020, so by the summer, we will have access to all new Pokemon and all new stuff to do in the game, which is awesome, so... Yeah, this is where they talk about uh, you're actually going to be able to obviously enjoy both. If you buy the expan expansion pack, you'll get both the island and the tundra, which is super cool. So both come with new different areas. And now for the rest of the video, I'm going to kind of go through some sections that um, kind of talk a little bit more. They actually do introduce some more Pokemon. So let's do it. All right, so we've got the Game Freak director going to go over a little bit more information. And here is where we get a more high quality image uh, of the island thing that we've seen before. So we see all the slow pokes. But in the corner here, we do also see what seems to be, it's got to be a Golduck and a Psyduck, in my opinion. Um, there's no way that that's not. So uh, them hitting us with this HD version is actually super cool. So that's kind of something that uh, they're showing us, giving us a little taste that we're going to get some more Kanto Pokemon, which is great. Also, we get a more high-res image of the snowy area where we can actually see some Pokemon flying. That's got to be the Articuno. Um, definitely got to be the legendary birds, you would assume but we can't see just quite well enough. There's also one small boy over there. So we do see the three, which I'm assuming that's got to just be the three legendary birds. Um, so there's going to be some type of story associated with those um, and these temple areas, which is super cool. So here's where we get some information about the dojo area and also a character that we have seen. So uh, they are going to be talking about the dojo, and this is Mustard. He's <laughs> This man's name is Mustard? Hold on a second. Why did they do you like that, man? Also, what's up with the brows? I, <laughs> I think it is really interesting how they do kind of go a little bit more in depth um, on the trailer after the direct. So I'm not going to be showing all of this as a lot of it's kind of uh, pretty cut and dry. But we'll be on, going through some things that might be... Uh, might be missed. But this is Mustard. Um, they do give some information about how um, they are just all new gym leaders, which is super cool. So Mustard is an OG. So here we see um, kind of just more evidence that Clara is going to be rocking a Dustox. It's got to be a Dustox on the head. Um, poison type. Who knows if Dustox is going to come back. Might get an entirely new form. Might just be might just be her hat. So <laughs> her, her hat. Her bow. So yeah, uh, if you're playing Pokemon Sword, you get access to Clara, Shield, you get Avery, which are Poison and a Psychic, respectively. Alright boys, we've got an all-new Pokemon, Cub Fu, which is going to be a Kung Fu fighting type, which is uh, going to be a legendary Pokemon, which is very interesting. They're hitting us with yet another legendary, even after the trailer, which is, uh, in my opinion, pretty cool. Yeah, we do actually get this as a gift Pokemon from Mustard. And uh, one thing that I do want to think about with all these introductions of new legendaries is kind of how they're going to work with the VGC format, which is the video game competition. Um, I do think that there probably will be a lot of banned ones. But in the past, we have seen a lot of overpower legendaries kind of run trap uh, in the VGC. But here we actually get introduced to uh, Urshifu, which is going to be some pretty badass looking fighting types so two distinct styles training together with cub fu be able to evolve um a single stretch so we have two different uh different styles which is super cool i really do like the design of this thing as well um I i'm just kind of a sucker for dark types so fighting in water type is also um a pretty rare type obviously we do have a couple of water and fighting types but it is quite competitive so fighting water rapid strike style So we got the Gigantamax forms as well. Uh, so this is what we saw kind of in the trailer at the very end. 
So we got the fighting dark type and then the fighting water type. So Gigantamax forms are going to be overpowered as hell. So next up, they're going to talk about the starter Pokemon, which is just basically going to go a little bit more in depth about their Gigantamax forms, which is really cool. Look at my boy Cinderace. He's straight up standing on an entire ball of fire. This man cannot be stopped. Also, Inteleon with the sniper thing is super cool. Rillaboom is a little bit underwhelming with his big drum set, but overall, I think it's really cool. Um, also, this is something that a lot of people I think overlooked is the EXP charm. Uh, it gets your team more experience points, which um, if you're just playing the game for the first time, really would be kind of broken. But I think this is actually a good thing for kind of post-game stuff. Being able to uh, grind up Pokemon easier is pretty great. Also, Tutor moves come back, which is awesome. Uh, completely new moves they kind of emphasize there, so that could be really cool. And also, we have Apricorns again. I don't know why they decided to bring back the Apricorns, but, you know, we'll take it. So next up, they go in a little bit more in-depth in the Tundra area. So here's where they're showing us a little bit more about Calyrex. I have no idea what is going on with the design of this thing, but it has got some crazy, some crazy stuff going on. I don't know what's up with the Triforces either. Um, it is Psychic Grass type, which is a pretty decent typing, and I think this thing could be, could be an interesting Pokemon. Not my favorite design, but you know we're all about we're all about new Pokemon, so we'll take it. So right after the section where they show Legends of the Past Return, which basically shows all of the legendary Pokemon, which will be obtainable through I'm assuming uh, max raid battles that'll probably roll out through like events, which I'm assuming. Um, they actually do have a part here where they discuss the fact that when they show the new looking Reggie areas, he does mention brand new legendary Pokemon. So that kind of implies that they're not formed of the Reggies, rather entirely new forms altogether, which uh, is, I believe something could be pretty important. So one last thing I do want to discuss, other than the fact that obviously Slowpoke is amazing and we deserve to have him back, um, you can actually get him from the Wedgehurst station and he is actually shiny locked there, but the one way you can get shiny Slowpoke is by going through uh, the method of breeding. So you can just hatch these things from eggs and you can get yourself a shiny slowpoke. So with that, that's pretty much all the information that I have that is kind of digging a little bit more deep. You can obviously go check out the direct for yourself to see uh, kind of how everything goes um, in order. But I really enjoyed talking about this. I think that it is great that Pokemon kind of hit us with this so early after the game came out. I think that it's going to really kind of revitalize and also really help out the competitive um, scene of this game which i think is probably the most important thing in terms of longevity for this game so uh, they actually mentioned that over 200 pokemon will be seen in <laughs> in this game in the uh, new areas which uh, is actually huge and also you know now that i'm thinking about it we got to go back and i do want to find there is this section here that shows the okay so in the scene here right below the slow pokes we see either that is a kingdra or that could be nope just kidding that's definitely kingdra <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button on the video if you enjoyed and leave a comment about what you guys think. Peace out.